Hi, welcome to chapter 1 of tutorial 7 for Heritage Officers. In this series of chapters, we'll be using SARS from the perspective of a Heritage Officer as we've rolled out SARS to two provinces thus far with two more following uh, later in this month, in November 2012. And this a uh, set of tutorials is aimed at helping uh, members of the PRAS um, to log on and assist their staff with using SARS for managing cases, managing permits, case decisions, and their monthly reports on their statistics. And uh, it's been uploaded to the help page on SARS, so it's available for members of the public to watch as well. But um, Apart from knowing what heritage heritage officers are able to do, um, that's not in, uh, particularly relevant to to members of the public or applicants. Um, and much of this has been repeated in the previous tutorials on creating cases and permits and so on, but I'll be wording the instructions as as if I'm a heritage officer, which should be fairly useful to the heritage officers. So let's start the. First thing, of course, is to go to the sara.org.za webpage, uh, log into Saras, and from there you'll be taken to your dashboard. So I've used the applicant user account as an example. I've given it heritage officer rights, and I'm going to log in. Remember, if you've forgotten your password, um, you can click on request new password. This will send an email link to your account. <laughs> and you are able to reset your password. We fixed a bug or a setting uh, a few months ago where it re required your old password. Now you can uh, reset your password without knowing your old password. And if you don't have an account yet, uh, click on create new account. For heritage officers, this is usually done by the um, administrator. And down the line, we'll be delegating the user management for each uh, heritage authority to their super user. Um, so that uh, they can create and manage their own accounts. So let's log in. And uh, you take into your dashboard. You have two uh, main views in your dashboard, uh, dashboard or blocks, uh, your My Cases and Cases on Agenda. Uh, you'll notice for applicants, this is My Applications and My Projects, where you're, you've been tagged as the consultant or the applicant on the case. Uh, and, and for heritage officers, you're uh, pulling all cases where you've been flagged as the case officer. Uh, cases and agenda, this applies to all the cases where the case status is on agenda, which we'll see in a minute, and the uh, meetings on, under the field collection on admin have been set to a particular date for a particular committee and particular authority. So for SARA only, I just hit apply, and now it's filtering all these various committees. Let's do the APM HOB committee, and you'll notice that the list changes immediately. So this is how we set um, the agenda up for our committee members to comment online without having to browse through all the cases on SARAS. The system is a national system, as you know, so Marfa can log on and flip through their committees. They're still setting up their, um, their cases, so there's only one um, case that's been logged as a test so far. Um, but you'll see this change over time. Um, there'll be hundreds of cases being listed for different committees and all the other priors as well. And even down to local municipal level with the city of Cape Town, once they start using SARS for setting up their meetings, they will also be able to use the same dashboard effect to filter out uh, cases being tagged to, to the uh, committees. Uh, remember that one important thing is the system remembers your last settings on these particular views. So if I've chosen uh, a particular case status or a particular committee here, uh, and I've moved on, on to other sections of SARS, when I return to my dashboard, those settings remain for my user account until I change into something else. I can also, it's a new feature we added the other day, once I've got a list of cases um, that I'd like to export to Excel, I can do that for creating an agenda. Uh, I can use the one here, or if I want to compile a monthly report on my open cases, I, I received or my HIA pending cases, I can 
export that list to Excel and I can also account for my closed cases uh, or my decision part cases uh, to show uh, the number of cases I've processed in a particular month for instance. Let's move on to uh, my account and you'll notice on edit for heritage officers you have the uh, heritage authority field. This is quite important. If you don't select a heritage authority here, certain filters won't work very well when you're selecting case officers. So based on your um, profile here, um, if you are a member of a MAFA or SARA or um, Heritage Western Cape or Northwest um, PRA, the case officers that come up in the list when you're on the admin section of a case will vary uh, depending on your logged in rights. Um, so that bear that in mind. Um, and uh, there's another important thing is your um, simple messages log. So if you click on that, all the subscribed content that you flagged yourself or tagged yourself to, it logs all changes to those um, cases or content types. Um, for heritage offices, it's not particularly useful or interesting, but for the applicants, it certainly um, is quite important. And uh, <coughs> if you're running 30 cases, it not only logs those cases to your dashboard, depending on what you've um, chosen, um, but it also will update any changes to those um, cases to the simple messages log. So this is where the subscriptions are viewed. Um, now for SARA staff, we we're also using um, an IT help desk and um, you know you are able to um, create tickets from your My Account. Um, but you can see that because this um, applicant hasn't been flagged with the user rights for the SARA staff, um, it doesn't appear here. So that, that was, it's a good example of how the system differentiates between uh, different heritage offices across different PRAs and, and, and SARA. Your profile, of course, is very important. So you have your user account. So make sure you have a profile page. If you don't have one, you won't be uh, located in the cases. The All the content on SARA uh, on SARA is, is linked to your profile, not to your user account. So have a look over here on your profile. And you should be the author of your own profile. So you should have the edit feature on your profile. If you don't, it means you're not the author of your profile. And you need to um, inform the administrator who will then make you the uh, author of your profile so that you can update your uh, information. Um, important is to uh, link yourself to your relevant organization. This field is used in your um, in your RODs and your permits and the pre-formatted templates. Um, your email address um, and your office phone number and address is important as well so that applicants are able to contact you if they need more information around a case. And very important is that you tick case officer under your group tags. If you don't tick this, you won't be um, available on the list for um, uh, uh, under the admin section on cases. Um, you can write an about page about yourself, you can upload a photo. Um, you, if you're a member of an organization like a SARPA or um, SAIA, you can put your organization number there. I usually preface this with this with the organization acronym like a SARPA. Um, your date of birth, this is normally used for research purposes. So, um, you don't have a problem giving your date of birth, you can in, fill that in um, and then save. Okay, right, so we have a profile, we have a username, an account, and SARS. We, um, we are heritage officers and we've made sure we've ticked case officer under our group tags. Normally, this is done for you when you set up as a case officer by the system administrator. Um, the uh, messages log you'll use quite a lot. And this is where you send private messages between you and other members on SARA. So it's not email, although it does trigger an email notification to the recipient, notifying them that there are messages waiting for them on SARA. So everyone has first name and surnames uh, separated by a full stop. So if we were sending a message to uh, Katie Smuts, for instance, she's a heritage officer in SARA, um, you could separate multiple people uh, 
so let's do um, let's do uh, Gina. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and so on. So separate them by commas, and you can send the same message to multiple people. Um, the case reference is useful, so you can start typing the name of a case, and it will hyperlink this message to that case. is extremely useful when you're communicating around a case. And uh, enter a simple message and send, and then this will send out a message to those two users. Um, this is used all the time um, by people for support. Uh, we are looking at the actual support module f around um, case management as well at some point, but um, it will add quite a, uh, a load onto the users at this stage. So we will only phase that in at a later stage if we need to. So please feel free to use the messaging module. All right, let's call that the end of this um, chapter, and we'll move on to cases and permits in the next.